Hey kiddos, happy Thursday. Welcome back to this last day for this week of my read alouds from the Magic Treehouse, Midnight on the Moon. I am so excited to see where Jack and Annie's adventures are going to take us today. Before we begin, and before we quickly review, I want you to go find your favorite spot, get all comfy and cozy, and we will begin. Go ahead. All right. Now that you're all comfy and cozy, last time we read Jack and Annie, and we heard about them, they were on the moon, exploring the moon. They had found the American flag. They learned that the moon doesn't have wind or rain. They also learned that there was a telescope. Hmm. But when Annie peeked into the telescope, she saw something or someone coming after her. Today, we may find out who it is. We may not. But let's see what happens in chapter six, High Jump. Who is that? said Jack. I don't know, said Annie. But we'll soon find out. She started waving. No, said Jack. He grabbed her arm. Let's go back to base before he gets here. Why? said Annie. We don't know who he is, said Jack. We don't know if he's friendly or mean or what. But we can't go back, said Annie. We haven't found the fourth M thing yet. We won't be able to go home. It doesn't matter. We can lock the door at the moon base until he goes away, said Jack. Then we can get new air tanks. Jack hurried to the moon buggy. Come on! He jumped into the driver's seat. Annie gave a little wave to the dot in the sky. Then she climbed into the moon buggy. The buggy took off. Careful, said Annie. They bumped over the rocks as Jack turned the buggy around. Then they zoomed toward the pass. Jack steered around craters and rocks. More than once, the buggy nearly tipped over. Whoa, slow down, said Annie. They were almost at the mountain pass. Suddenly, a cloud of dust flew up in front of them. The ground trembled. Watch it, cried Annie. Jack couldn't see a thing. He stepped on the brake. The buggy jerked to a stop. The dust settled. A giant rock had fallen in the narrow path. It was stuck between two walls of rock. They were trapped. Jack found a picture of a giant rock in the moon book. He read aloud, Rocks of all sizes crash into the moon from outer space. These rocks are called meteorites. We're lucky that meteorite didn't land on us, said Jack. Yeah, and... I guess it's too big to be the M thing, said Annie. She had climbed out of the moon buggy and was standing by the meteorite. It was more than twice as tall as she was. Jack looked at the black sky. The flying thing was nowhere in sight. Yet. We'll have to jump over it, said Annie. Jump? I don't think so, said Jack. It's too high. I'm going to try anyways, said Annie. Wait, let's think first, said Jack. But Annie was already backing up. One, two, three, go! And she shouted and took giant leaping steps towards the meteorite. When Annie got close to the rock, she pushed off the ground. Then she flew through space and disappeared behind the meteorite. Annie, Jack called. There was no answer. Oh, brother, Jack said. 
He backed up and took off toward the rock. He jumped as high as he could. Then he was flying through space. Jack hit the ground and fell face down into the dust. Jack tried to stand, but his suit was too bulky. He tried to roll over, but his suit made that even impossible. Oh no, he groaned. Not again. Are you here? asked Danny. Did you make it? Yes. Jack was relieved to hear her voice, but he couldn't turn his head to see her. He could only hear her over the radio. Can you come help me up? he asked. Nope, said Annie. Why not? I fell down too, she said. Here's the picture of Jack and Annie. Jack is coming right over the rock, but Annie's already down. Oh, brother, Jack sighed. Now we are really in trouble. He tried to stand again and failed. Can you see anything? He asked. Just the sky, said Annie. Wow, it is weird. I'm worried about our air tanks, said Jack. I feel like it's been two hours. Jack, said Annie. And what about that moon man, said Jack. Where did he go to? Jack, whispered Annie. What? He's here, she said. The moon man is here. What? He's standing above me. And that's the end of chapter six. Now, before it's your turn to go and read, I want you to think about what you would be feeling. What is something you think is coming next? Who do you think the moon person is? When you go to read today, I want you to practice thinking about what may happen next in a story. Does it leave you hanging in mystery like this chapter does? I don't know, but it's now your turn to go practice reading. I can't wait to see you all on Monday as we continue in Chapter 7 of The Magic Treehouse. Bye, everyone!